Okay, in this video we're going to take a look at, um, we're going to derive the acceleration due to gravity of a vertical cylinder and also the infinite plate. And we're going to take an approach which, which is probably a little bit different than you've run into in textbooks, but uh, we'll kind of, the result that we come up with uh, will we'll, um, basically follow this integration. Uh, instead of Cartesian coordinates, we'll use cylindrical coordinates. Uh, you know, in, in this case, with uh, the differential volume element, we have dx, dy, dz. So we'll take a, um, take a cylindrical uh, coordinate approach to that. And really what we're, what we're aiming for in the end, in addition to, to the outgrowths of uh, two additional relationships, is to get uh, to, to understand where this um, uh, expression for the the Bouguer plate effect two pi g rho t uh, comes from, so so that's um, that's that's what's on uh, on the boilerplate for today, and we start with just kind of showing the notation that we're going to be using the different variables that uh, we'll be working with, and as I said, we're going to be using a vertical cylinder and uh, <clears throat> uh, just the variables here we could be at some observation point which would be at an elevation z above this cylinder so this cylinder could be buried beneath the surface for example and uh, z and h1 are are the same h2 m minus h1 would be the thickness of the plate um, that sometimes is expressed as delta z or t or even sometimes z. Uh, you just have to pay attention to the notation. The volume element that we're going to be integrating over is this um, a little wedge here <coughs> and the distance from the observation point out to the volume element uh, dv is s and of course we have s squared here in the denominator of Newton's uh, universal law of gravitation and R is just the radius of the cylinder. And D phi is the um, <clears throat> differential uh, angle subtended by this uh, volume element. So we take a look at this uh, integral, the differential volume element in cylindrical coordinates is R D phi. And remember R D phi gives us the kind of the length of this volume element uh, along the circumference. Uh, dr is the thickness of this volume element and dz is the height of that volume element. So this is the integral that we have to, uh, to work with. <coughs> and um, we have um, s is equal to r squared plus z squared. So we set up the integral. Uh, we're substituting now for uh, s squared, which is equal to r squared plus c squared. Okay. And so that gives us this integral here. And remember, as we talked about before um, in some of our earlier discussions, we need to take the vertical component of the acceleration due to gravity of the individual volume element here. Uh, because the gravimeter is responding to a vertical changes in the vertical extension of, uh, of a spring. So uh, that gives us z over s, the side adjacent over the hypotenuse. And this is uh, z over r squared plus c squared to the 1 half power. <coughs> so that's an additional factor that gets uh, introduced. So we have this integral times the cosine of theta. And working through that, uh, substituting for the cosine of theta, we get um, this additional factor in here of z over r squared plus c e squared or the 1 half. That gives us the differential volume element uh, times uh, z, which is kind of buried in there, over r squared plus e squared or the 3 halves power. So this is the integral that we, that we have to work with. <coughs> And notice that we have three different uh, integrations, three different differential 
components so that we have to integrate, uh, do three integrations. And um, uh, I've ordered them um, kind of from the outside, inside. So this would be the simplest one to take a look at. And you might ask yourself, okay, we've got this integral here, the integral of d phi uh, from 0 to 2 pi all the way around the circle. Uh, what would that integral be? And uh, this is something which should almost automatically come to mind that that's uh, the uh, integral here will be phi, uh, evaluated at the limits here. Uh, so we end up getting 2 pi minus uh, 0 is equal to 2 pi for this definite integral here. So we just uh, substitute. We've got the 2 pi g rho, and you already know what the plate formula is. It's 2 pi g rho t, so we've got these two additional integrations in here. Somehow we're going to come up with t for the thickness of the uh, thickness of the disk. So if if we take a look at this integral here, we've got uh, to go through this integration from r equals 0 to r0, uh, r dr over r squared plus e squared to the 3 halves power. Now, it <clears throat> uh, just depends on you know how comfortable you are with your integration. You could use a substitution of a variable and let u equal r squared plus e squared. That would give you a du dr equal to 2r. And your dr then, so we're trying to substitute out these terms here, your d dr will be du over 2r, so we get rid of this r here, and we have uh, that this, uh, this integ integral that we're working with turns into this integral, where we have the integral of r du over 2r. Notice the r's cancel out. We have this additional factor of 1 half in there, so this is the integral that you would um, evaluate using the substitution of variable approach. So. Uh, at this point, you would just use a power rule as you normally would, and you'd see that <clears throat> you get minus u to the minus one half power. This would be minus um, minus r squared plus z squared to the minus one half power, which you would evaluate at its um, uh, at its, at its limits um, zero to r zero, and because of the sign here, we're just kind of reversing the terms. So we get 1 over z minus 1 over r0 squared plus z squared to the 1 half power. So we would substitute this result back into uh, you know, this, this expression over here. We figured out what this integral is. And uh, now we have this integral of z dz to worry about, but we have these two additional terms in here. So what do you think uh, you're going to get? Uh, you know, this would be something to, to carry through on your own. And uh, take a few minutes to do that. And if you do, you see that uh, we you know, just go one additional step. We're going to multiply through by z. We get 1 minus our integrand becomes 1 minus z over our 0 squared plus z squared to the 1 half power. And then think about what that integral would be. And if we just distribute the integration, uh, we have 2 pi g rho times the integral dz minus 2 pi g rho times the integral h1 to h2 of z dz over r0 squared plus e squared. And all we did was just kind of distribute the uh, integration through this difference of terms. So if we carry this forward, uh, and you know, remember we're we're looking at the field of the cylinder right now. So we do have um, uh, an outer radius which is not infinite, which would be the case for the plate, and we are potentially at some distance h1 above the surface of the cylinder. So these are our limits of integration in, this, in these definite integrals here. So if you Take a few minutes, uh, you know, and go through these integrations. You you get um, get this result, which if we pull out our two pi g rho, we get uh, h two minus h one minus r zero squared plus h two squared to the one half power plus r zero squared plus h one squared to the one half power. Now, if we let h one equal zero, <clears throat> in other words, this in this case we're standing above the cylinder, a certain distance. The, the cylinder could be buried and we're uh, 
a distance h1 above the top of the cylinder. So if we let h1 equal 0 so that we're just standing on the cylinder, h2 minus h1 is equal to h2, basically, which is equal to delta z, sometimes z, just depends. You know, take a look at the text that you're reading, and we'll, we'll use t. Uh, that would be the thickness of the disk, and think about what you're going to get when you do that for a second. This term is going to become t, h2 minus h1, that's the thickness of the disk. Uh, this h, h1, is 0, so we just get uh, the square root of r0 squared, which gives us r0. So we end up getting 2 pi g rho t, and I move this r over here, minus r0 squared plus, and then remember now that h2 is actually equal to t, so we get r0 squared plus t squared to the one-half power. Okay, uh, what about the infinite plate? Well, <clears throat> this is the formula for the cylinder, and we're standing right on top of the cylinder. And we just showed how to get that. So take a minute and ask yourself, what happens if we let r0 go to infinity in this expression? So, if you did that, you should uh, see, sometimes it gets a little, you know, what do I do with these infinities? Uh, so we have an infinity here, we have minus infinity squared plus t squared. Well, you know, infinity squared plus t squared is still infinity. So um, this turns out to be t plus infinity minus infinity, or 2 pi g rho t. So there is your uh, plate uh, formula. So this would be the, the plate effect um, that's added in when we're calculating the theoretical gravity or subtracted when we're uh, calculating the uh, corrections. So we've actually solved three problems. Uh, the first equation here gives us an expression for the uh, gravitational field or the acceleration produced by a vertical cylinder without a radius uh, r0 squared buried at a depth h1 and extending down to a depth h2. And so this could be used, this would be, you know, something that's uh, beneath us that we want to model. Uh, it could be a buried volcanic conduit or pipe. Uh, in this case, we're standing on top of the cylinder. So the cylinder would be at the surface. And so, you know, it could potentially be some kind of a geological feature. Uh, it could also be a topographic feature. Perhaps we want to know what the acceleration uh, due to gravity of a topographic feature like a butte would be, we could use this expression, assuming that we're standing in the middle of it. And here we have uh, the expression for the plate. This is the infinite plate, the Bouguer plate term. So, plate with thickness t. Okay, so next, uh, consider the theoretical or predicted gravity. Consider this in the theoretical or predicted gravity, consider this term, which is the effect of terrain. We've, we've talked about the Bouguer plate effect at 2 pi g rho t, but we know that the world is not flat, uh, and we know that we have topography. So in some areas we have uh, valleys. Uh, you know, if our station is situated over here, we've got a valley over here, we have less mass beneath the gravimeter, so the extension of the spring is actually reduced. And over here we have uh, some mountains or some hills above the gravimeter. That also reduces the extension of the spring, so when we're calculating the terrain effect, we have this minus sign in here. Whether you're a valley or whether you're a hill, you reduce the extension of the spring. And um, that's what we're going to that's what we're going to talk about the next time. I would just say that with the plate, there's sometimes there's a feeling that, uh, well, you know, the acceleration due to gravity of an infinite plate should be infinite, but we have a volume element over here. We're looking at the vertical component. And the further away these volume elements get from the gravimeter, uh, that, you know, w w when you get out beyond a certain distance, the influence on the vertical extension of the spring spring 
basically cancels out. So we have one over here, got one over here. Uh, they 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 add a little bit, but um, their horizontal components are canceling each other out. So you so you really don't get um, um, you know it, it's basically this area here which influences the extension. Anyway, uh, next time the terrain correction.